announcements by the uh, uh, Special Pro Prosecutor's Office of the Kosovo Specialist Chambers um, last week uh, um, was not quite a surprise for anyone. Uh, why? Because uh, since the beginning of the workings of uh, the Kosovo Specialist Chambers from September 2016, there have been expectations already for almost four years that um, the prosecutor's office will make an announcement what is the status of uh, the investigations. And so uh, the first word about the state of indictments was not a uh, surprise, it was overdue actually. I think the public deserved to know much earlier uh, how the investigations uh, were going on, because do not forget this uh, uh, prosecution's office did not start in September 2016 to investigate it, but had already a lot of material to look into in, and to continue the investigations. First, this uh, very curious uh, book by Carla Del Ponte from 2008. Then there was this Dick Marty report um, uh, written by uh, and uh, um, uh, as, as a Council of Europe's official document. And then we had the sit for special in investigations uh, uh, report by Clint Williamson in 2014. So if you have such a robust um, collection of material about this immensely serious uh, alleged crimes, you would think that this uh, investigation by uh, prosecutor's office of Kosovo Specialist Chambers would produce the very short period of time uh, uh, a, a serious uh, draft uh, investigation or in the case that is going to last endlessly to face the public who finances the course and to say, well, after four years, four and a half years, we worked so hard, but this is what we got and we do not uh, think it's enough for the indictment. Curiously, none of these two options that I'm now mentioning uh, happened. The court did not say we have uh, launched, uh, we were lodged our draft uh, indictment to the uh, pretrial judge to confirm it, they were basically saying, mm, we've done our job, but already for two months, the judges are not confirming it. They did not say, well, after four and a half years, we really cannot continue investigations. We, we did not come up with something else. They chose the way in between saying we worked so hard. We now lodged uh, and submitted our uh, draft investigation um, indictment to the judges. But hey, the judges or the judge, pretrial judge is not replying to us. So this is what surprised me. Why this in-between move by the prosecutor? Why not saying, this is confirmed indictment, we lodged it and judges confirmed it, or to say we tried our best, but after four and a half years, we do not have prima facie um, evidence that would convince judges to confirm indictment. I, I think it, it's an interesting and charming question you asked, but uh, uh, it's, a, it's a huge simplification to a very complex uh, issue. Uh, in crimes and prosecutions of mass atrocities and generally political crimes, which obviously mass atrocities are, there is always a very close connection between politics and uh, legal process. Uh, so I'm absolutely not ready and prepared to speculate who and why uh, announced this um, uh, uh, possibility of uh, indictment against Kadri Veseli and President Hashim Tarchi, uh, because even if there were no political motives behind, it now has become hugely politicized issue and all part, 
parties involved in the dialogue between Pristina and Belgrade are now using it uh, as some sort of currency to uh, strengthen their position. So yes, it has uh, announcement by itself has become uh, politicized by all parties involved. However, what I find fascinating just from this one page of announcement, press announcement, it is extremely uh, short text. But if you read carefully what's happening there, is actually that prosecution not just said we've done our best and they name out of blue two names of the two very prominent polit uh, political uh, figures and one sitting head of state. I mean, it, it is quite unprecedented. And I wonder if a administrator and public servant like uh, chief prosecutor is, in this case, an American citizen, Jack Smith, would ever dare to mention the name of a sitting head of state without having some sort of political green light from somewhere, from some other place. Because you see, well, I, I'm telling you, I have no whatsoever uh, information about it. I'm just telling you about rules and principles that a legal institution, which is full of civil servants, none of the uh, holders of the office in a court, in any court, has a mandate of people. It's not elected position. So they are appointees. So you always have to look who had the power to appoint chief prosecutor and usually people who had the power, the jure and de facto to appoint uh, chief prosecutor will probably have a di direct communication about him. So I'm not going into details and I'm not going to speculate and telling you what uh, uh, rumor mill outside of these institutions will tell. But what is for me extremely important is that this short statement names a sitting head of state as a potential indictee has a huge, huge uh, implications and for politics and for future of the court and its um, impartiality. And the second thing is that they basically say we are on a, such a good way to do our job. Listen to these two names, but these people in secret obstruct our process. This is absolutely uh, uncalled for and unworthy of the office of chief prosecutor of SPO. Why? Because I see it much more as covering themselves up in the case that pretrial judge does not approve the indictment. They would say because these two people or Kosovo uh, leadership has been obstructing the system. So pause a little bit to this, what it really means. Uh, I, yeah, the, the, look, you, you are asking me to be clairvoyant. I haven't seen the draft indictment, uh, so I don't know anything about uh, relationship or quality of the judges. Uh, maybe we'll be terribly surprised. Maybe it's an indictment that I would say we have never seen anything like that in the Milosevic case. But what is important is this covering themselves up and saying uh, Kosovo state and these individuals actually who represent Kosovo state and Kosovo political institutions are working in secret against the court that Kosovo itself has uh, 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 made possible. And if they are doing anything in secret to obstruct. Why do we as a public do not know what exactly it is? Maybe I could help. If they say, you know, they're hiding this type of documents, maybe I know where these documents are because I worked on the related cases. But these uh, uh, insinuations from the office of the prosecutor are completely hurting due process legal process, and they are hurting the credibility of the whole institution. So it's not that politics are ruining credibility of Kosovo specialist chambers. This very act makes all of us interested and professional observers to doubt what are actually the motives of ch So uh, it, it is going to be extremely interesting to watch in the coming uh, days, weeks, and months 
how the Office of Prosecutor, Prosecutor is going to uh, uh, do uh, damage control and uh, I think uh, waiting for decision of judges about the faith of um, indictment will uh, shed a lot of light what is actually what uh, everyone uh, is now concerned about, what is the text of this draft indictment. Uh, look, uh, you know, the beast of institution is that institutions are very difficult to put in life, to come into existence, but it is even more difficult to abolish an institution. Institution is not a living person, but it has extreme resilience and and, and uh, potential and desire to continue. It's even more difficult to abolish institution than to, uh, constitute it, to constitute it, to start it. So I, there are several possibilities. Uh, again, I cannot give you any clairvoyant view what's going to happen, but from my uh, professional um, position, I can tell you the following. The most probable scenario is face-saving exercise about the court, certain type of indictment that will um, exonerate this mistake by the prosecutor's office, and then at a later stage, either to have a very limited indictment and a trial that will have a huge potential for defendants to win it, you know, because where are these uh, blunted um, evidence about uh, uh, crimes which happened 20 years ago and no one came up with something that even newspapers could, could show to the world what, what, what we can expect. So I think it will be face-saving exercise because abolition of this court would... would uh, damage seriously uh, the authority of those international powers and individual states who worked very hard to present it as a legitimate legal organization. So I don't see it happening. If you think that Kosovo can, second uh, possibility is that Kosovo's politicians take a very firm stand to stand enough is enough, it is our court, we formed it, but we are now stopping it. Because do not forget these insinuations that, that um, high-level Kosovar politicians are obstructing it are for us who worked in a legal institution quite strange because every suspect, every indictee, every defendant at a trial has a right that protects him or her from self-incrimination. So why should someone suspected of whatever crimes go with hands up and say, shoot me? No, it is essential human rights guaranteed by, by international uh, conventions and covenants from 1966. So uh, Kosovo politicians would actually probably have to think twice to take such a hard position and pose and position themselves against the whole world in those individual countries that are very uh, in favor of supporting Kosovo's independence uh, in the future, I think the best cause would be to let the court work and show its inherent weaknesses. And one of the biggest weaknesses is inability to find uh, evidence for any of these uh, far-fetched uh, allegations and to defeat the legal process within and with legal response to it. I would not, certainly at this point, I do not see how a robust political uh, uh, a, a, a attack against the court would benefit Kosovo as a state and Kosovo people. And certainly I do not think that Kosovo people should be uh, should be um, uh, hostages to some high-level political games between uh, uh, 
Pristina, uh, Belgrade, Washington, Brussels, or London. I think Kosovo people deserve better. <laughs>